Well, happy Sunday morning, Journey Church. We're so glad you're tuned in this morning uh, with us. Uh, we love gathering like this, and uh, one of the things we've been doing over the last few weeks has been asking a question before we kind of get into some announcements and we continue with the service this morning. And the question today, uh, last week we talked about food, but today we want to ask you this question. It's an age-old question. Um, what three items would you need and would you want to have if you were uh, stranded on a desert island? And I think it's a very very apt question in terms of our current stay-at-home order. So I want you to answer that today in the comments section. Just take a few minutes uh, as we begin our service today. What are the three items you have fought to have uh, with you while you've been at home? And if you were on a stranded on a desert island that you would make sure you had? Take just a few minutes to answer those questions. Well, I hope you had fun with that question. And uh, well, my name is Matt Dawson. I'm the pastor here at Journey Church. And we, we exist to humbly point everyone to absolute hope, no matter how we are engaging, no matter what it looks like. And I know it's a little different over the last several weeks, and it'll look different over the next few more weeks to come as we continue to make transitions and changes throughout uh, the month of May. We want to make sure you know of a couple things. If you are new here or you're first time tuning in with us or you're here live with us this morning, uh, there's an opportunity for you to connect with us and there's a digital connection card. Uh, you can follow the links in our, our comment section to uh, connect with us. We'd love to know who you are, uh, where you're watching from, where you're connecting from uh, so that we can get you some information and tell you a little bit about uh, Journey Church. All right. There's also a couple other links in there. Uh, one is for giving and we just want to say a huge thank you. Uh, over the last several weeks, we've really uh, seen an increase in giving, which is really unheard of uh, during this, uh, this pandemic uh, for churches. And so we're so thankful for the church, uh, the church that calls Journey Home, uh, that you are continuing to be faithful stewards even during this time. We know that people are being affected throughout this whole process, losing jobs, businesses having to close, uh, the way things are working with unemployment and the, uh, those things. We understand that there's, this is a trying time for the entire country, the entire world. Uh, but we are so thankful for those who can continue to give that you have been giving. And so that's you this morning. Please take advantage of that. You can click the link and give online. There's lots of ways to give uh, here at Journey. Uh, we also want you to know that we want to pray for you. We've had lots of prayer requests come in over the last several weeks, especially concerning uh, the COVID uh, crisis. But we want to make sure you know it doesn't have to just be that. Uh, we're happy to pray for you in any way, shape, and form. But you can click a link and actually share your prayer request with us. As a church, we are continuing to pray for Maddie and the Klosky family um, who uh, has, has been affected by this. And so we've been lifting them up with small groups and, and lots of people just kind of connecting with them. And uh, we'll continue to shout them out and pray for them uh, as a church. And uh, we want to make sure that they know they are loved, they are supported. And we know this will be the case for lots of our family here at the church. Hopefully um, we'll get through this summer together um, as we continue to make transitions. Um, know that there's a couple ways that we want you to get engaged, okay? Um, one is through LKN Strong. Um, this is a partnership with SB Experiential, and um, this is a huge deal for us because we want to see this happen really continue beyond uh, this current crisis as an opportunity for people to be able to share needs that they have. And then for a group of volunteers, we have already have two or three organizations partnered with LKN Strong uh, to really supply the volunteers to meet uh, need needs. Tracy and I went and met some needs this past weekend, um, and, and really it's whatever level you can handle but um, we want you to help us share this. We want you to help us spread the word. Um, and so if you're willing to volunteer, please sign up and volunteer. But more importantly, make sure you continue to post this and share LK and Strong with your friends and neighbors and people in your circle so that they can share it with their friends. And, and actually the needs will continue to come in for people that, that that really just need help uh, during this season, all right? Another way you can do it, if it's not something you want to physically do, run to the store, or do some things like that, you're just, you're kind of homebound right now, we understand. Um, but we also have something called Hope Notes, and that's something we do through a Facebook group. You can contact us here at Journey, and you can contact Nicole uh, at the, Nicole at thejourneyonline.com. She will connect you with our Hope Notes uh, program, and that is just people being able to uh, nominate people who they feel like could use a note of encouragement 
and we have people in our church that are also willing to write those notes and send them during this time. So you can, again, help us get the word out about Hope Notes. Uh, nominate people that you believe uh, could use an encouraging word at this time. Maybe they've lost a job. Maybe they've, they've lost a family member. Maybe they've lost, um, uh, you know, they're, they're struggling economically during this time. Or they're just, because of the nature of, of all these things, they're just filled with anxiety or struggling with family. And, you know, this is not a, this is not a wonderful time for every single person out there. There's a lot of people going through difficulty. And so sometimes those notes of encouragement, even though they're from a stranger, uh, really could mean a lot to them. So help us uh, engage in that way. I want to make sure you also know there is something very special happening this Wednesday, which is our ladies gathering, our women's gathering here at Journey. Um, they will be going live on Wednesday night, the 6th, I believe, Wednesday night, and uh, this particular, uh, because of the nature of this pandemic and the stay-at-home order, we know that there's been a lot of um, emotional distress happening in people. And uh, Tracy has decided to interview Adam Fadel, who's one of our counselors here at the church that we recommend that has an office here at the building. Um, she's going to be on with him this Wednesday night through an interview um, live so that you can ask questions through the Facebook group. Now, let me just go ahead and let, make sure you know, you have to be a part of the Gathering Women's Facebook group in order to participate in this because of the sensitive nature of the topics they will be discussing. If you don't already know what that is, you can search for it on Facebook. You can reach out to us as a church. We'll be happy to get you that information this week through email, but uh, you have to be a part of that. So I encourage all of the women of our church uh, to connect to the Facebook group and to tune in to what Tracy and Adam will be talking about uh, Wednesday night. As always, after this service, uh, Tracy and I will remain on the, the live um, with Facebook, and we'd love to be able to just connect with you, answer questions you may have, um, and also pray with you after the service today. I do want to encourage you. This is a time in which it can be kind of easy. Um, you've got us up on the TV through YouTube. Um, your family's sitting down. Everybody's drinking their coffee. Um, it's easy to just let let this service kind of come like a like any other media content. Maybe it's on your phone, maybe it's on your computer, your iPad, and it's really easy to get distracted. And so um, I'm just going to say a quick prayer as we begin this morning uh, that you would have the opportunity just to engage in this moment. Let God speak to you uh, through this moment, through the, through the songs we're going to sing. Uh, we hope you engage and sing with them through the word uh, that Donnie's going to bring to us this morning. We hope you engage uh, with that. And uh, the best way to do that is obviously through YouTube and Facebook. You can comment throughout the service, ask questions, respond. Uh, and we want to encourage you to do that. Let me pray for us this morning and just encourage us to not allow ourselves for this period of time to be distracted. Father God, we just thank you for the opportunity in this moment to connect through technology and to gather as a church in our homes. There is something incredibly powerful that you do with the church when they gather together. It's called corporate worship. And God, I'm so thankful that by the Holy Spirit of God, you are still able to do this incredible thing as we all gather in unity, you know, through the technology in our homes to worship you and to celebrate the greatness of who you are, God. God, I pray right now as we dedicate this time to you, as we sort of set this hour apart, God, that you would have your way in our hearts, in our minds. Don't let us get distracted. Help us continue to stay engaged as we want to just experience you in a special way this morning. We pray all this in your name, Jesus. Amen. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb Till I met you I was breathing but now Try to hide. It 
but you've changed our lives. You've broken our chains. So Jesus, we give you all the praise. That even in the darkest circumstances, even in the darkest days of our lives, by the death and resurrection of you Jesus that we are able to have that absolute hope to hold on to our hope that goes beyond human understanding to have the peace that goes beyond this world so God, let our eyes let our hearts let our minds be so focused on you Lord, all we want to do is just sit in your presence and to soak in your love. So God, as we listen to your message this morning, God, open our hearts, open our ears to hear. So Holy Spirit, convict us this morning so that we may be Good morning. Welcome to Journey Online. My name is Donnie. I'm the executive pastor here, and we are so glad to have you joining us this morning. Uh, someday, we hope to have you back here in the audience, because trust me, it is way more fun preaching to a live audience than an empty room. So we are looking forward to that day, but until then, we trust that God is going to, to do an amazing work in your life here this morning, and uh, that He's going to continue to speak to us, no matter where we're at and where uh, we're meeting. So thank you guys for joining us this morning. Just to make you aware of it, if you haven't uh, been with us for a while, maybe you're joining us for the first time online, we do this thing called live Q&A, and uh, it's there for you to use because we want to answer the questions that you're asking. And so if you have a question, any type of question that you have, we'd love for you to text it into us or email us uh, your question. We're going to do our very best to answer that question for you guys. So thank you guys for joining us this morning and uh, just get ready to just worship God this morning in hearing his word spoken as we've already sung his praises here this morning. I trust that uh, he's going to continue to speak to us uh, through this new series uh, that we're kicking off. So just to be, make you aware of it, that we're kicking off a brand new series today called Transformed. All right, And I am super excited to be able to share it with you uh, today and be the one to be able to kick this message off because my message is entitled this morning in this Transformed series, Old man, new man. It's a process. Old man, new man. It's a process. And you'll understand what that looks like in a little bit as we continue to go through uh, that phrase this morning. Uh, but uh, I hope that you'll listen through the, to the very end uh, because it is a process. And if you get stuck in the middle, you might not like what I have to say. But stay till the end and uh, we'll hopefully get you through it and to the point where you're like, oh, that makes so much more sense. So, But like always, I like to pray before I get started. just kind of helps me center myself and, and just really dedicate this to, the word, uh, to God's Word this morning. So let's pray. Dear God, I just uh, come before you right now, Lord. I just ask that you would just uh, take the words that you've laid upon my heart. Lord, I pray that they are your words and not my words. God, I pray that even... Over the airwaves this morning, God, that, uh, that you would just do a transformative work that only you can do. 
Take the words and uh, seal them up in our hearts, those that are true. Lord, anything that I say that is false or not helpful, God, just let it fall by the wayside this morning, and we just thank you for that. Guide us, direct us here this morning, and use me to be a reflection of your glory this morning. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so when we think about this idea of being transformed, when we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, according to the Scriptures, we literally become a new creation. It says it like this in 2 Corinthians. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Old man, new man. You're going to hear this all throughout this morning. The old life has gone and the new life has begun. All right, so the new life begins. That means there is a process that is about to take place. And so the old is gone, the new has begun, begun. this new process has uh, started. So that's great. We read about it. But what does that really mean? Well, that's a great question. And that's what we're going to be talking about over the next few weeks. And we're going to be diving into that. But today I'm kind of kind of give you this big overview picture of what that really means. This, this transformation that happens within the life of a person who puts their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Okay, so it's not like a, it's not a magic pill that we take. It doesn't happen automatically. It's a process that begins. Becoming a follower of Christ changes us. It literally helps us become a new person. It's a transformative work that happens from the inside out. In the biblical world or the, the theological world that you might have grown up in, you've also maybe heard the word sanctification. Transformation, sanctification, it's very much the same process. I will warn you though, right, depending upon your denominational break, background, I have many pastor friends um, who would disagree with me on this that, that would say that sanctification happens at the moment of salvation. Uh, personally, I disagree with that, and you're listening to a church that also uh, disagrees with that. We believe that it's a process that continues to go on for a lifetime. It's not something that just happens the very first moment that you begin to believe in Christ. All right? So we want to help you understand, okay, what is it that we believe? What is this transformative process that we think continues to transpire in our lives as we continue to follow and surrender our lives to Christ? Just a real quick example so that you kind of just get an idea of why I, I, I think that this is a process and why we think it's a process. Just think about a baby being born, all right? A baby, you don't, you don't just magically have an adult. You don't birth a baby and while you've now, now got an adult. That goes through a process. There's life stages. Some of those life stages are extremely beautiful. Some of them are extremely frustrating. If you've raised children, you know that not all of life raising a child is fun. There are times in, the, in that child's life that, that cause you to pull your hair out and they want to pull their hair out. And it's just, it's hard. But it's a process and it's a process that's necessary to create a mature adult. It's the same way in our faith. We, ha we have access to Christ from the moment of our new life, from the moment of our spiritual rebirth. But just like that baby has to go through those stages, we have to go through those stages as well. And that, that process looks different in each one of our lives. But we have to adopt certain types of mindsets in order for a lot to allow that process to happen in a healthy manner and so that's really what i want to kind of give you the picture of this morning is how do we allow that transformative process to happen in a healthy fashion in our lives what does that what does that healthy process look like and if you were me or if i were you i'd be asking well why would i trust you donnie and well i'll tell you why because i've practiced some really unhealthy practices over the years and so but i've also put into place some very healthy practices. And so all I'm trying to do this morning is to help you understand what are the, what are the ways in order to keep from learning the hard way. All right? You can learn the hard way if you want. I did. Uh, many of us choose that way. Um, but it's not necessarily the best. And if, and if I can help you keep from learning some of the difficult lessons the hard way, that's, that's what I want to be able to do this morning. So it, it starts with, with making our goal at the moment we become a follower of Christ this and the goal that i want to challenge you to begin to think in your mind that this is this is should be the goal of every believer of christ our goal should be <clears throat> to become a mature reflection of who christ is our goal should become should be to become a mature believer of christ mature not immature mature and a mature person is that adult all right so let me show you from the word of god what that means all right comes out of ephesians 
It says, that, however, is not the way of life you learned. All right? It's talking to that believer, that new person, that who you are in Christ now. That's not what you learned. When you heard about Christ, you were taught in him accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. So you learn the truth, all right? You learned a new way of thinking. Keep going. You were taught with regard to your former way of life, your old man. You were taught with about your old man to put your off your old self. There's an action that happens there. You have to take the initiative to do that. And your old self is constantly being corrupted by its deceitful desires. Our old man wants to take us back to our old ways of thinking. Our old, our old way of life is constantly drawing us back to where we came from. We have to understand that. To be made new in the attitude of your minds. That's what we were taught, that we need to put the old self off and put on a new mind. And remember that. Where is this new process happening? This transformative work is happening right here in our minds. And to put on a new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Our desire has to be to want to be like God in all the things that He wants us to become. We need to begin to think of ourselves in the way that God thinks about ourselves. We've got to put off the old way of thinking and put on a new way of thinking. We have to change our minds. Literally, we have to change our minds about what God says is good and what God says is right. We have to change our minds about what God says is holy. That's putting on the holiness and righteousness of God, which we have access to now. So transformation, hear me on this. this is, if there's one thing that I want you to ha- take away from here this morning, transformation happens in the way that we think. It's right here. Transformation starts in our minds because what we think about defines what we do. What we think about defines what we do. Think about the passage of Scripture that says, take every thought captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ. What we think about defines what we do. For too many people, we try to fix what we do instead of changing the way we think. And then we wonder why things never change. Why do I keep getting caught in the same sin? Why do I keep doing the same things that I've always done before? Because you haven't changed the way you think about it yet. You're, you're putting on your old self. You're just trying to pick off the bad parts of your old self. You're trying to change your behavior versus the way that you think. All right? So if we really want to, if we want to put on this idea of who Christ is in our lives, if we really want to be able to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, we must desire holiness and righteousness. Mm. Man, think, just think about that for a second. If we want to become a mature believer in Christ, if we really want this transformative work to happen within our lives, we must desire holiness. We must desire righteousness in our lives. That's hard. That means we have to literally think about our old lives and put it aside because what our our sinful lifestyle looks like is not holiness or righteousness displayed so if we want to change that we've got to change the way that we think and this takes work on our part to take to change our minds it takes discipline and i've got a little phrase you'll hear me say it but um, we have to train our brain we have to train our brain so say that with me train your brain it takes discipline all right it's not going to be an easy process in order to change our train our brain we have to think differently all right now, Paul does all the work for us. He, to- he shows us what this looks like in the life of a believer and how do we train our brain to think differently? How do we take our thoughts captive? What does that really look like? Corinthians talks about it like this, right? 1 Corinthians 9 says, Don't you know that the runners in a stadium all race? All right? So this idea, everybody that runs, runs in this race. But only one, only one person in that race is going to win. So you, those of you that are watching here today, run in such a way to win the prize. Now, everyone who competes exercises self-control in everything. So he's referring to the, the, uh, the Olympics, the Greek Olympics that would have been happening back then. Everybody would have known what was going on in those days and how their bodies had to be trained in strict environments. It's the same way today. If you get into college and into the pro sports, any of you that are uh, athletes out there, you know the strict self-control that you have to have in order to keep your body in top condition. But we do that just to get a a moment of glory that's going to fade away. 
But Paul's saying that same type of strict behavior, the same training that you go into in order to win a race, Paul, des- Paul describes that same training as what we have to do with the way that we think. He says, however, they do it to receive a crown that will fade away, but we get a crown that will never fade away. We do this so that our crown will never disappear. The crown of what? The crown of righteousness. Therefore, I do not run like one who runs aimlessly. I do not box like one beating the air. Instead, I discipline my body and I bring it under strict control. So that after preaching to others, I myself will not be disqualified. All right, this takes incredible self-control. It's not, it is not a magic pill. You can't just magically one day say, oh, I'm a Christian and man, everything is better. It just doesn't work that way. The only way this behavior kicks in, the only way our, our behavior changes is when we begin to change the way that we think. We have to want to act like Christ. I remember I was preaching one time in another state at a different church uh, but after the service, someone came up to me and asked me, yeah, but Donnie, and I was preaching on sin and how we need to change the way that we think. Yeah, but Donnie, don't you ever, don't you ever just want to be bad? Like, I mean, really bad. Like, you don't, you don't obviously, you don't always want to be good. And he, he kind of caught me off guard. And I'm like, and in, in the moment, I answered, no, I, I really don't want to be bad. And that was the only, it sounded kind of spiritual in a moment, at least I thought it in my head, but afterwards it really caused me to think, and I'm like, okay, do I really want to be bad? Is that, but the reality is no, I, I don't want to be bad. The, the truth of the matter is I, I'm bad enough. Like I don't need it to make it my goal. Like I fall into badness every day. Like I don't need to make it my goal. My goal is to become like Christ. My goal isn't to become bad. Like I don't want to be bad. Like when, I'm, when I sin, I feel bad. Like, I don't want to do that against Christ. Like, Christ delivered me from all of my badness. So why would I want to just be bad? What that does is that tells me, like, where we're at in our walk with God. Where is our maturity level? Like, if I still just want to go be bad, then I'm certainly not putting on the mind of Christ, right? Ephesians 5 says it like this. Follow God's example. You who are listening, this Ephesians wasn't written to non-Christians. He was talking to Christians. He was talking to followers of God. Therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you, among you who are listening here this morning, you, there must not be, be even a hint of sexual immorality (laughs) among you who are listening here today among you there must not even be a hint of any kind of impurity (laughs) nor of any greed because of these because these are all improper of god's holy people remember a mature believer is desiring righteousness and holiness he just defined for us what unholy and unrighteous behavior looks like keep going oh but he makes it more difficult (laughs) in fact you guys there shouldn't even be obscenity no foolish talking no coarse joking wow you see because these are all out of place all out of place for who non-believers no they can do whatever they want These are out of place for the believer, the one who said, I follow Christ, but yet we hold on to these old ways because we're funny, right? Hmm. No, our our speech should be laced with thanksgiving. Because for of this you can be sure, no immoral, no impure, no greedy person, because such a person is idolater. What does that mean? An idolater puts these things before God. An idolater puts their greed, their immorality, their impurities before God. Anything before God is an idol. Such a person is an idolater, and no such person has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. He's he's challenging the early believers. These things are not becoming of the way of God. If you're doing these things, you're not 
you are not putting on the mind of Christ. You are not desiring holiness and righteousness. If these things are still showing up in your life, something is out of order in your life. And, and it's not just today that we're struggling with this as a society. These were things that were going on in the, in the ancient world. These are, things that, these are things that Paul was addressing in the early church. Keep going. Let no one deceive you. Let, let no pastor deceive you. Let no fellow Christian those of you that are hearing my words, let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of such things, what things? The things I just listed. God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Brothers and sisters, hear me on this and hear me good. He is not talking to non-Christians. He is talking to the church. God's wrath comes upon those who are disobedient. Who are the disobedient? Those of us who say that we follow Christ, yet continue to live in our old self. We deny the truth of Christ and the transformative work of Christ, and we continue to put on our old self. Keep going. Therefore, do not be partners with them. For you were once darkness. The old self lives in darkness. But now you are light in the Lord. We are to put on the reflection. We are to reflect the glory, the holiness, the righteousness of God. And yet so many of us hold on to our old self. He says, don't do that anymore. Live as children of the light. Whew. Man, that's heavy stuff. I don't know if, if you struggle with any of that, but that is, that's hard. Like, all of my old ways, like I... I have to let go of all that? Yeah. If we want to reflect the glory of God, if, if our lives want to be tr true images of the transformative work of what Christ gave himself up as a fragrant love offering for, then we've got to be able to put our old self off by changing the way we view our old self. Stop longing to be like that. Look at this. Hebrews says it like this. Okay, This whole idea of God's wrath kind of messes up people's worlds. Hebrews 12 says, it's the child that he loves that he disciplines. The child that he embraces, he also corrects. Again, he's talking to followers of Christ. He is not talking to the world. God is, I love this, and this is out of the message, and I chose the message because I absolutely love the way this is phrased. When he's correcting you, when he's disciplining you, God is educating you. That's why you must never drop out. He's treating you as dear children. This trouble, this, this punishment you feel like you're in, this trouble you're in, it isn't punishment. It's training. It's training. It's training for what? It's training for righteousness. It's training for holiness. It's training so that we can put on the mind of Christ. I, was, I have so many stories I could tell here. When I was 19 and when I was 21 years old, I learned this passage of training in a very, very hard way. I've experienced it many times throughout the course of life after that as well. But when I was 19, I was in the hospital in drug-induced induced a coma for over three days. My, my intestines nearly exploded. They should have exploded by all, uh, by all science. I should have been dead, but I wasn't. But I was laid up in the hospital for a month and then at home for a month. I finished my freshman year of college lying in bed flat on my back. You can hear about the rest of the story. I wrote a book about this whole process, this transformative process it's called uh, Your Sixth Sense, Don't Be Deceived. It's the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. You can read about the story there, but that's not what I want to focus on. I, I just want to warn you guys that this, this punishment that God gives us in order to bring our behavior into alignment with His holiness and righteousness is real. It happens. It transforms us. It trains us. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade those times in my life for the world. Why? Because it helped me understand God is my authority. God is my Lord. God is my Savior and what He has delivered me from and what He has delivered me for. I wouldn't trade that for the world, but I'll tell you this. I have so many Christian friends that when I begin to talk about the punishment of God on the life of a believer, they stop listening. You might already be trying to defend yourself why God would never do that. Just after I read the very Word of God. Like, we spend so much time denying what God does 
that we, we miss out on what he's doing. Like, he trains us. We don't even want to be trained. We just want to be saved. I just want to be able to do whatever I want to do. I just want to be able to keep my old self. I don't want to put on the new mind of Christ. I want, to, I want my old self to be saved and do whatever I want to do. And that's not mature belief. That's not, that's not reflecting the transformative work of Christ. Hebrews 12, 11 continues to go on and say this. The author of Hebrews is saying, I get it. No discipline seems pleasant at the time. No training. Ask any athlete. No training seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Yeah, if you've ever played a a college sport or professional sport, even some high school sports, it's painful. But look at this. Look at this. This training, this discipline, this correction. Later on, it produces a harvest of righteousness. Remember, righteousness. Remember, our goal is to reflect the holiness and righteousness of God. When we allow ourselves to be trained by the discipline of God, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace. Peace. Peace in the midst of training. It allows us to experience peace even though life may be hard for those who have been trained by it. Therefore, I love this, strengthen your weak, your feeble arms and your weak knees. In my language, that means suck it up, buttercup. All right? (laughs) So that's what, that's the epitome of this transformative work that God does in us when we yield ourselves to the fullness of God. All of Hebrews is talking about becoming a mature believer of God. Becoming a mature believer in Christ. And yet so many of us, we, we just want to push our new self to the side and we just want God to condone what it is that we do. And, and that bothers me as a pastor because it's clear to me when our example is not becoming of God. The scriptures are very clear with some very black and white sins that we spend hours trying to justify and condone in the church. I have a lot of, I have a lot of pastor friends. I have a lot of pastor acquaintances, and I certainly know a lot of Christians. I've been doing this ministry t- thing full time for 27 years, and unfortunately, I've seen a lot of my pastors, friends, and various denominations spend more time justifying sinful behavior than helping people understand what people's what sinful behavior people have been justified from and there's a big difference in what i just said and if you didn't catch it they justify sinful behavior instead of helping people understand what they've been justified from and the way that we preach is going to be dramatically different the way that we help you understand what transformative work of christ does in your life is going to be dramatically different one is going to put a stamp of approval on whatever you want to do the other is going to say there's a better way of life if you put your old self behind. Christ delivered you from your sin. He didn't deliver you so you could sin. There's a big difference. And you have, to, you have to begin to put on that mind of Christ. You've got to want His holiness. You've got to want His righteousness versus your selfishness and your sinfulness. 1 Corinthians 6.11 says this. That's what some of you were. That old person, that old self of yours, those old ways of living, that's what some of you were, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our God. Now you've got to understand what the Spirit does there. I love this passage. I love this passage because in the original Greek, those words right there, justified, washed, and and sanctified, those, those original Greek words are actually action verbs, all right? They look like adverbs in our English language. They look like things that were past tense, things that were done. They were actually verbs describing an activity that was happening. All right? So they're not, they're not adverbs describing something that is complete. They're verbs describing an action taking place in your life as we speak right now. The Spirit of God is actively washing you from your sin. Remember, He's training you for righteousness. The Holy Spirit of God is actively justifying you from your sin. He is actively sanctifying you from your sin. He is transforming you. The Spirit of the living God is living inside of you. If you have put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God lives and dwells inside of this body. Christ says that your your body is now your temple. 
And, and every time we use this temple to continue to go back to our old ways, we grieve the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit's role is to train us. And if we continue to grieve the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is then going to have to take us through a discipline process. And that's hard because no discipline seems fun in the moment. But in the end, it will produce a harvest of righteousness. Why? Because God wants all of his children to become mature reflections of his holiness and righteousness on this earth. So Romans 12, 2 says this. Because of all of that, then, don't conform to the pattern of the world any longer. But be transformed, where? By the renewing of your minds. It all happens right here, you guys. Right here in the brain. Train your brain. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then, only then, only when we transform our thinking to look at sin the way that God looks at sin, instead of trying to condone it, we get to get away from it. It says, then and only then will you be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. When we put on the mind of Christ, we'll then be able to know what Christ wants in our lives. This is a daily process. We have to, we have to, begin to train our brain and not our body all right it does, i'm in favor of training your body I, I believe that physical discipline and health is important trust me it, it's part of life i believe but changing the way we think about sin and bringing it into alignment with god is far more important we have to change the way we think not the way that we act too many followers of Christ are so focused on just changing our behavior, we try and pick this bad fruit off the tree and that bad fruit off the tree while never changing the root. The tree is never going to produce a different fruit if we don't change the way we think about it. Now I get it, some of you might get discouraged at this point in time. I, I would, I do, I have. But I want you to, this is the good news, all right? So that's the, that's the bad news, right? This transformative work is a process. It hurts, it's painful, it's it's cloaked in discipline which feels like punishment but actually god says it's training some of you may feel like well i just don't like that i don't want that okay i get that but that's when we begin to feel like it's our responsibility to do the work and if if that's what we're thinking then we're, we're missing a key element in all this process the holy spirit now dwells inside of us and it's the holy spirit's job to continue to transform us into the image of christ all we have to do is surrender our thinking to the Holy Spirit's control. And the Holy Spirit, once we surrender, once we stop trying to condone our sinful behavior, once we stop trying to justify our old self and how we can continue to do that and still be a Christian, once we, once we put that type of thinking aside, we can enter into this world and we can say, Holy Spirit, my life is yours. You do with me as you wish. I surrender to your control. And then he begins this process of changing the way that we think about sin. And as long as you're holding on to your old ways of thinking about sin, you will never experience the fullness of, of the transformative work of the Holy Spirit. We have to surrender our minds to the Holy Spirit. Then he does the work. We don't have to do the work. When we are surrendered to God, he does the transformation within us. We don't have to worry about picking off the bad fruit because our our thinking is so rooted in who christ is our thinking is so rooted in holiness and righteousness that we're no longer dwelling upon the old but we're dwelling upon the new the way that god wants to transform our minds then the holy spirit comes in and he begins to push out the negative behaviors why because that's his role the holy spirit's role is to bring us into righteousness the holy spirit's role is to cause us to become a reflection of the holiness and righteousness of god that's that transformative work look at what the scriptures say if the old way which brings condemnation now the old way that's talking about the old testament and if you read the old testament it was all about actions and you had to do this and you had to do that there were laws upon laws ask the pharisees and the sadducees and you'll see that there were hundreds of laws that the old way the old way had to be followed and if you didn't do that you were you weren't considered part of the kingdom right if the old way which brings condemnation because all you could see was their behavior if it was glorious and it was that's why we have like matt was talking about in the bible for grown-ups okay the old way the old covenant the old testament was really glorious it was a reflection of god's character how much more glorious is the new way the new way of christ which makes us right with 
God. How much more glorious is the way in which Christ has lived his life? How much more glorious is the way that Christ gives us access to? Keep going. There's an, continue on jumping down to verse 14. But, but Paul, as he's writing to the church in Corinth, he gets that people aren't quite tracking because he's, he's writing to people that just came out of the old way, right? So he's trying to transform their thinking. But people's minds were hardened, just like some of your minds are hardened. You're still going to try and hold on to your old sins. And to this day, whenever the Old Covenant is being read, the Old Testament, even to this day, when it's being read, the same veil covers their minds so that they cannot understand the truth. This veil can be removed only by believing in Christ. It can only be removed by believing in Christ. Keep going. Yes, even today when they read Moses' writings, their hearts are covered with that veil. And they do not understand. Why? Because they still think it's all, yeah, but that's still wrapped up in my behavior. I've got to change my behavior. But whenever someone turns to the Lord, that veil is taken away. For the Lord is the Spirit. I love this. The Lord is the Spirit. And wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. There's freedom in all of this. Christ allows us access to the Spirit of God to live inside of us. And He is the one who's doing the work. There's freedom because we're no longer bound by the actions of the Old Covenant that we have to do all of this. Christ gave us a new way way where He says, Surrender your thinking to Me and I will do it in you. The Spirit of the Lord, He gives us freedom. Freedom from the power of sin. He gives us freedom from our old man and he gives us access to our new man that is controlled by the spirit of god and the only way we can have access to the new man is to surrender our thinking to the spirit of god and he does the work so for all of us who have had that veil removed and we can see and reflect the glory of the lord because a mature believer's response is to desire holiness and righteousness, right? Because if we have that removed and we can reflect the glory of the Lord, and the Lord who is the Spirit, He makes us more and more like Him as we are changed into His glorious image. The good news in all of this is all we have to do is transform our thinking to surrender that to the Holy Spirit's work, and then the Holy Spirit resides in us, and He changes our behavior. Why? Because we've surrendered our thinking to the way that He views the glory of the Lord. And He causes us then to become a reflection of the image of God. How awesome is that? So my question for you this morning as I bring this to a close is really simple. It's really simple. Will you allow the Holy Spirit? Will you allow the Holy Spirit to change your mind and your life into the likeness of Christ? Will you allow Him that kind of an intimate action into your life this morning? The only person that can answer that question is you. Maybe you're listening and you've never given your life to Christ and you're like, ah, the I don't even want that. Or maybe today you're like, I finally do want that. I want that new way of thinking. I want to I be able to be delivered from all the sinful actions of my behavior. Then all you have to do is say, God, forgive me for my sins. I finally realized that I'm a, I'm a horrible person left to myself. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for living a, a perfect life. Thank you for being a perfect sacrifice for my sins. That's all you've got to believe, that he died on that cross and he paid the price for your sins and then he rose again. And he's coming back to get those of us to believe in him. And during that time, an in-between span, which has now been over 2,000 years, he is transforming all of those of us who call upon his name because he has sent his spirit to reside in each one of us. If you just put your faith and trust in that God will do a work in your life that blows your mind. And he'll put you on a path on this earth to reflect the glory of his image that is holy and righteous. 
And he has given you complete access to being delivered from your old self. But it starts with surrender. Surrendering your mind to the control of the Holy Spirit. Will you do that with me today? It's not going to be an easy path, but it will be a freeing path. Let's pray. Dear God, I just uh, thank you for everybody who's been watching here today. Lord, I just pray that you just be with each and every single word, every word that is um, your word. God, just seal it up in our hearts. And God, if, there, if someone's listening today for the very first time and they've never surrendered their life today to you, then let today be the day that they say, God, I have lived myself for myself in the old way for too long. And I want access to this Holy Spirit that he's talking about. I want access to your work being done in my life. I'm tired of trying to do it all myself. God, if there's someone out there today, let them reach out to us so that we can pray with them and we can begin to help them in this process of discipleship and, and growing and maturity and understanding of you. And Lord, for all of those that have been walking this road and we've been trying to fix our behavior and we've found ourselves in discouraging places, God, let us continually, daily, surrender our thinking back to you. Help us to view our sin as you view it. Help us to long for holiness and righteousness to be evident in our lives. And God, forgive us when we give in to our deceitful desires of our old self that just creeps in and captivates our minds. God, forgive us for that. May we be a true reflection of a transformed life as long as you give us breath. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you guys for joining us. Man, I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray that God just continues to do an incredible work in your life uh, as you begin this process and as you continue in this process. Um, Matt and Tracy are going to be live on Facebook. If you have questions, make sure you jump on over to their page and, and uh, there'll be a link that you can follow on that. Uh, but man, we just love you guys and we are praying for you. <laughs> Our minds need to be transformed by the glory of Christ during this time in amazing ways because... Uh, it truly is a trying time, and our prayers are with you guys. So thank you guys for joining us, and we hope that you log back in next week as we continue this series on being transformed. Thank you guys. Thank you.